Tosca pens. What are they? These just arrived today and I'm excited to find out how they work. Let's take a look. So this pack of four, you can see they are the pinks. A light pink, a dark pink, a purple and a white. And it came, these are from the UK and they came in this plastic bag that has some tape. It's a little Ziploc bag. So I'll just pull the tape off and undo the Ziploc and they should just come out quite easily. Now, this dark pink, I mean, I do love these colours, so I went for my first set of four. These were the perfect colours. So you can see, this is a nice pink. They're shrink wrapped, and I've been watching YouTube videos where they reckon that if you just twist the cap while it's still in the wrapping, it should break the plastic seal. But for me, that isn't working. It's like, I don't know how they do that unless they have really really strong hands but um, that's liable to break the pen if I try that so because that doesn't work I will just go off camera a minute and use my knife okay now that all that's done we will look at the instructions on the back it says to shake first and then use the, the, let's see if we can pull the lid off, we can. I don't know if you can see this on camera, whether the angle is right. If I go this way, here, the tip, you push it up and down, just like, um, I don't know if you remember those metallic golden Christmas pens from years ago. You push them up and down to activate. So what we're going to do, put the lid back on and shake. And I'm going to shake for about 30 seconds. Because the ball bearing inside has to activate all the paint. roughly 30 seconds, not counting. We take the lid off and one, two, three. And I'm gonna put the lid back on and let it rest. And I'm gonna do the same to all of them. You don't have to stab the pen when you're putting it on the paper or sketchbook. Apparently I have read, been doing a lot of research before these pens arrived and they're not very good on paper. Some artists say they're no good on paper, others say they haven't had a problem. So we're going to first have a go with doing this uh, sketchbook, the black hardback sketchbook. And we might have to repeat the process until we start seeing the nib covered in paint. I've also read that they might have a bit of a smell. Others say no smell, some say 
it does smell so again I want to find out I'm hoping there's going to be no smell we now stand them up and just let the paint flow it's a bit of a process at the beginning but once they're activated you don't have to go through the rigmarole again now the ones I've got are called because they were from the UK they're all in English so normally you'd see a lot of Japanese writing because they're Japanese so the colors I've noticed are for example here this is number 51 and the actual type of the Posca pen is a PC1M and the 1M is to tell you the size of the, the, the nib so I have the, the size below the medium um, there's a size below this one which is extra fine I think it's called or ultra fine and that's really really tiny but these I thought the price was good and the size of the nib were good I'll just have a look at this pink one. Oh, nothing yet, you see. It's white at the moment. So, four more. And, right, I'll put the lid back on. Give it a bit more of a shake. You see, the paint is coming down the end of the nib, very slowly. It's changing colour. It's what I wanted on camera to show. We'll just do the tip again. slowly coming <laughs> it's quite a process but like I said once you've done it you won't have to do so often you might just have to shake the pen but other than that you won't have to uh, do the whole thing like we're doing Might have to do a bit more shake. Ah, you can see now the shaking helps once you've done the pushing and you have to repeat that process. I see now. So, this is nice colour. Oh, my goodness, nice colour. Hmm, I hope you can all see that on camera. So, another shake. And you really don't have to um, push down very hard. Once the ink is there, then you're drawing, you know. It's very good. It's a nice fine tip, but not silly thin. And apparently, they're used for graffiti as well. And they're best for non-porous. Um, is it porous? I get confused. Basically, people say that it's better on glass or metal or cardboard, um, plastic, non porous, correct. Whereas porous material like paper is difficult. Perfect. 
we are now pink and ready to go. That is a lovely pink. We just have to shake them up because the more, when you first start, you might see the purple there is a little dull because it still needs to get going and have the paint mix. The white one's going to be tricky to know when it's ready because the, the nib is white already. <laughs> There's a big one. Let's have a test. No, not yet. You know, you won't find many videos <laughs> of this whole process unless it's been sped up. But that's why I wanted to actually show you. And that's ready now. And now this is looking ready. Yep. So now I thought I will do a cupcake design. Simply because I think that's what the colours remind me of. Dot around the sketchbook. You can do very thin, tiny, tiny little dots. Very delicate work can be achieved with the Posca pens, depending on the nib sizes you choose. I think there's five sizes in total. You can get a real fat, chunky, um, nib, but obviously the bigger nib you go, the better for covering backgrounds and things. So sometimes it's a good idea to get a few different size nibs for doing in your sketchbooks or something, because then you can use one size for filling in the background and one size for doing the detail. very impressed I have to say and I'm going to say thank you for watching I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you'd like to see more videos of me dealing with Posca pens let me know in the comments below take care bye